Today, I'm going to go over the new ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 with Intel's Lunar Lake. Look, I wasn't going to make a review of this laptop because we're kind of late to the party here, but I truly think that this is one of the best laptops currently on the market, so here we are. In fact, if you are looking for a high quality portable laptop for basic home or office use, this is as good as you're going to get. But it is super expensive. So I'm going to quickly walk you through what makes this laptop so special, then I'll cover where it trips up, and finally I'll compare it to similar laptops so that you can see if it's worth buying. Just quickly though, if you are unaware, ThinkPads are Lenovo's business range of laptops, but unlike most business laptops, many individuals do choose to buy these. In fact, ThinkPads have a cult-like following. That is because they are extremely well built, they are reliable, they have comfortable keyboards, excellent Linux support, and they include the red track point. This specific model, the X1 Carbon, sits at the very top, being the most premium 14-inch laptop that they have. What you'll immediately notice when you pick it up is how incredibly lightweight and compact it is. Last year, the X1 Carbon's chassis was redesigned, making it noticeably smaller and lighter. Well, this year's Lunar Lake version is even lighter, at less than a kilogram and under 2.2 pounds. However, unlike other super lightweight laptops like LG's Gram, this X1 Carbon actually feels very well built. It's quite rigid. Now, last year the X1 Carbon's updated smaller chassis just didn't entirely work out. That's because the Intel Meteor Lake processor inside it wasn't efficient enough to be cooled in such a small laptop. So you ended up with a trade-off. You could get decent performance when the laptop was run on its best performance mode, but you had to deal with a hot filling laptop and some fan noise. On its default balance mode, which is what most people will use by the way, there was very little heat and fan noise, but there was a big drop in performance. Well, the good news is that this updated version with Lunar Lake has pretty much fixed this issue. Net-net, when running on the laptop's best performance mode, you get similar performance to last year. Faster single core and slightly slower multi-core. But this new model feels noticeably cooler to the touch for no extra fan noise. On balance mode, it's good to see performance doesn't drop as much. This year's version was also dead silent and felt cool to the touch when running on that mode. When you look at the laptop's power draw, you can see why. In both modes, this new Lunar Lake version draws noticeably less power. I think this new processor just better suits a super thin and light laptop like this one and it just makes it feel more complete. But how is its actual performance compared to all laptops? Well, compared to other laptops with a Lunar Lake processor like the Zenbook S14 or the Yoga Slim 7i Aura Edition, the X1 Carbon is slower on its performance mode and a lot slower on its balance mode. Overall, this laptop has enough performance for light use, general business use, and some basic programming or that sort of thing, but if you require performance in a small laptop, you guys should look elsewhere. As you can see from our graphs, there are just far better options. Before we leave performance, I do want to talk about the integrated GPU. It is better than last year's. However, the increased GPU performance, it doesn't come free. There is more fan noise, and the laptop does feel warmer when maxing out the GPU. One thing that I found interesting from our graphs, though, is how far Intel has come from the X1 Carbon Gen 11 from just two years ago. Intel has gone from having the worst integrated graphics in their 13th gen processor to the best. Alright, let's now talk about the keyboard. It's one of the better ones available in a small laptop. The keys feel nice and soft to press and have ample key travel at 1.5mm. The keyboard has a multi-stage backlight and feels roomy with a decent amount of space between each key. I also like the location of the fingerprint reader and the sensible placement of the special keys like home and end. The keyboard is pretty quiet to type on, so if you're using it in a meeting room, you won't disturb others. And after a long typing session, if you lift your palms off the palm rest, you won't notice anything at all. No sweat patches, something that has plagued laptops with soft touch palm rests like this one. In fact, the entire chassis of the laptop is reasonably resistant to sweat and smudges. They still occur, but they aren't as obnoxious as on other dark coloured laptops. This all being said, the keyboard isn't perfect. Even with its deep key travel, I still felt like I was hitting the bottom of the keyboard deck, and that to me felt a little uncomfortable. I also didn't love the placement of the page down and up keys near the left and right arrow keys. I regularly mispress them. Look, you'll get used to this if this is your only keyboard, but if you are swapping between keyboards, you'll probably find this a bit annoying. The display is a strong point of this laptop. It's a high resolution, fast refresh rate, 14-inch OLED panel with excellent color reproduction. It hits 400 nits of brightness, which sounds so-so on paper, but it's actually much better than you'd think. That's because this display has an anti-reflective coating that actually works pretty well, so you just don't need to burn your eyes with super high levels of brightness to combat as many reflections. Please note though, there is a slight screen door effect, meaning when you stare at white-coloured content, you will see coloured pixels peeping through. 
This unfortunately happens with a lot of OLED displays that we've tested. The variety of ports on this laptop is good to see. Two Thunderbolt 4 ports that support charging, HDMI, two USB-A ports and a headphone mic combo jack. The power button is on the right side of the laptop, but don't worry, I don't think you'll accidentally mispress it, it is recessed. Alright, so that's a lot of pros, but for a laptop that costs this much, I was disappointed to see how many aspects of it just weren't as premium as they really should be. The webcam is quite disappointing, I mean look at me, I look grainy, the colour's a little bit off. Guys, I'm prettier than this man, I mean seriously, given that this is the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, supposedly Lenovo's most expensive, best business laptop, business people rely on using their webcams, they use them all the time, and there's plenty of room atop the display to put in a better webcam. The speakers are also a little disappointing, they sound tinny, muddled and they definitely lack bass. <laughs> Next up is battery life. It is improved this year, which is a positive given that the laptop's battery size remains unchanged at 57 watt hours. But that's the issue, it is a small battery. There are plenty of other Lunar Lake laptops that have larger batteries and much longer battery life. They are heavier and larger though, so you need to ask yourself, do you want so-so battery life and ultimate portability, or do you want less portability and more battery life? Next is the trackpad. This laptop absolutely should come standard with a more accurate haptic one. The Surface laptop does and it costs half as much as this laptop. I'm not saying that this is a bad trackpad, it's one of the more accurate mechanical ones that I've used. Plus it doesn't suffer from the slippery coating of many other ThinkPads. That being said, it's just not as good as some of the best haptic ones around. Furthermore, for people who don't use the red track point like me, you'll find that this trackpad just feels cramped. It is shorter than other trackpads to make room for the track points left and right buttons. I frequently found my fingers just hitting the top of the trackpad. Look, a bit of good news, if like me you want a ThinkPad with a better trackpad, Lenovo does have their new ThinkPad X9 coming, which I believe comes with a haptic trackpad. I'll link it down below, we've already ordered one in for review and we'll have it up soon. Back on the X1 Carbon, next is a minor annoyance, but annoying nonetheless. Both charging capable ports are on the left side of the laptop. You may have to run a cable around the back, which could get in your way. This laptop really should have a Thunderbolt port on either side. Now let's talk Linux support, normally a positive of ThinkPads. We tested the latest version of Fedora and noticed that the sound, display brightness up and down, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth just didn't work out of the box. I would assume that if we did a full install and updated to the latest drivers that these things would work, but they didn't out of the gate. Also, what really disappointed us is the fact that you can't buy this laptop with Linux. For the older Gen 12 version, you could get $140 off if you bought it with Fedora or Ubuntu. When we drilled in further though, things got worse. We found a forum post where Lenovo stated that Linux is just not supported on this laptop, which is clearly disappointing. And I think that this is a good time to talk about pricing. This is undoubtedly a fantastic laptop with a lot of unique attributes that are a reason to pay more for it. It's super lightweight while still being very sturdy, it has a great keyboard, it has a good OLED screen, its Lunar Lake processor is ideal for basic office and home use while giving you broad application compatibility, which by the way many competing laptops with Qualcomm processors don't. It has decent battery life and no heat or fan noise. But even with all this, there is no way that this laptop is worth $2,500. I mean come on, you could buy a very high-end MacBook Pro 14 for that kind of money and that laptop would just annihilate this one. Yes, I know it's a different kind of laptop but net net, the MacBook Pro 14 is just much better in a lot of ways. On the flip side, there are many laptops that give you 90% of what this one does for less than 50% of its price. If you appreciate better performance, the HP Omnibook Ultra can regularly be found for $900, and that laptop has a much more powerful AMD Zen 5 processor. It is heavier though, and it doesn't have a fast refresh rate display. If you are just sticking to basic office applications, the Surface Laptop 7 can also be found for around $900. That laptop feels just as premium and is also very portable, but its battery life is so-so and it runs the ARM version of Windows, so some specialty applications and games may not work. Lenovo's own Slim 7X is another one to consider. It actually has a better display, but its trackpad is worse, and like the Surface it uses a Snapdragon processor, so same risk. If you don't like those, the Zenbook S14 is a super portable Lunar Lake laptop. It has longer battery life, but its display is very glossy, which makes it a bit of a pain to use out and about. 
I could mention a couple of others, but instead, just head over to our website at justjosh.tech. That's where you'll find all the laptops that we recommend for various types of use cases, as well as our helpful price tracker. That's where we found the sales that I just talked about. Anyway, let's bring it home. For people with light computing needs who want a premium and very portable laptop, I think this is a great one, so long as you can find it on sale for $1,800 or less. With that said, if you want to support our mission to find you the best laptop at the best price, then smash the like button and get subscribed. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.